Camera people love taking pictures of their cameras when they're fully rigged out. I do this, everyone does this. Usually you'll see some sick custom red rig or a black magic with a special side handle you haven't seen, and you'll think more about the rig than you would the actual image that it creates. But I rarely see those types of, whoa, check out this camera posts with a Sony Venice. And I got the opportunity to shoot on one of these large monstrosities, so I wanted to make a quick video because it's literally made in between my shooting days to talk about why people would or should not use this camera and why it justifies its $42,000 body only price tag. The Sony Venice is a cinema camera, not just in the sense of a Blackmagic Pocket cinema camera as in it can handle cinema things, it's designed with cinema in mind. It has two control sides, the one over here and one on the other side is for you, the operator. This is mainly for an assistant. I'm just pointing it out because that's the level of camera we're talking about here. In terms of specs, this thing can shoot 5.6K up to 72 frames per second and a wide variety of other shooting modes, which is why you might end up using it over say an Alexa. I don't feel it's appropriate for me to share the images I've captured for the client that's paying for the rental of this camera, but I do think some of the B-roll I can show you here. While it is a Sony camera, it's the first one I have no menu complaints with. Everything is super obviously laid out with custom short buttons, and you have to double press in order to format a card or change the base ISO, just so that you don't bump something accidentally. It's very well thought out in terms of a UI perspective, and it makes me wonder how Sony also made the FS7 line of cameras, which could not be more layered with unnecessary menu systems. This is better, do this. It is a full frame sensor with a PL mount, but it does have an E mount underneath that PL mount. So you can just take that off and use Sony lenses with the camera. But most of the time you'll be using PL lenses, like these Cook Pancros that I got to use on this job, which I'll make a separate video just talking about how dreamy those things are. So how do you actually use this thing? And is it any different than smaller cinema cameras? It is certainly different because of one main factor, and that is the weight. This camera alone weighs nine pounds. That's before you put on the extension pack for recording raw, and a battery, and a monitor, and a lens, and a gear. All rigged up, this camera comes in at around 20 pounds. And for a featherweight, this is a heavyweight match. It's a lot of weight for me to carry while shooting for a full day. So I need to use accessories that make it much more manageable to do so. I do look very silly like a scorpion creature, but an easy rig does help a lot with redistributing the weight. And if you want to get that handheld look, that's kind of the only way to do it. Or just do a lot of bicep curls. Otherwise, this camera is really not meant to be a solo operated camera, but I was doing it and it was fairly manageable. The side menu gives me everything I need at the press of three or so buttons. Can control ND, can control ISO value, white balance, all from a short menu different to the one that's mainly used over here. It's not exactly for the lightweight mobile filmmaker as this is the card reader you need if you'd like to see any of the footage. The reason you would shoot on this camera is 100% image quality. Second to that would be all the variable types of frame sizes you can have on this. The cons are definitely the price and the weight. To rent this camera for about 10 days, just under two weeks, is $12,000. So it's no small hit to your budget in terms of equipment rentals. And that's just for the camera, the lenses, and the accessories to make it work. But I did prefer operating this to a full-size Alexa because this system is a little more obviously laid out to me. It feels a little more modern. And I just kind of like how the buttons are laid out for an operator, not just if it's on sticks. 
The built-in NDs make this a choice for me over a red sometimes. I could see why you'd make that choice if you're in a run and gun scenario and you don't want to be dealing with a variable ND or a drop an ND map box. Up to eight stops of ND internally here, which is a lot. This is definitely the nerdiest video I have put out on the channel in a long time in terms of cinematography and specs and how much this camera costs and what it can do. But it's rare that I get an opportunity to shoot on one of these things. Even if I'm getting a rental, it's usually an Alexa Mini or a RED package. This one, not so often. So I want to take advantage of having it around during the rental period and just talking about it a bit. Hopefully you went, huh, or more likely, why, when hearing about the price and are at least a little more curious about what Hollywood or the highest end cinema cameras really offer. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for supporting the channel. And until next time, I'm off walking.